All right, now this is going to be a very long blog about education. I got a lot to say. This will be two or three or four or five blogs. It was in the paper the other day, in two days of, of stories, that these uh, private schools that people send their kids to, the kids are buying their grades. Now, I've always said that. And it's, oh, what are you talking about? These private schools, they have smaller classes, better teachers, better education. That's why the parents send their kids to private schools. And I've always said they send to private schools because the kids can't make it in regular high school. They're flunking out. All of a sudden, they go to private schools. They get A's, B's. You know, they're always passing. In public schools, they're flunking out. In private schools, all of a sudden, they're passing. Well, sure, they're passing because the education is better. The teachers are better. The smaller classes. Then these articles in the paper for two days, big full-page articles that an undercover reporter went to a private school, didn't study, didn't take tests, didn't show up, and passed with an 85 average. They can't understand how did they pass with an 85 average because they said it doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to read you the articles because it said based on the calculations on what they got, they got a 50 in their test, a 40 in their test, a 60 in their test. She said to the teacher, look, I really got a pass. He said, okay, you get 85. They said they can't believe how they, and more and more students are going to college, universities, flunking out because they all went to private schools and now the, the, uh, the, the system is saying, if this kid went to a private school, put a P on his record. So the university knows that he went to a private school, and therefore he paid for his grades because they have no idea what the hell's going on. They didn't really study, they didn't take tests. They just got good grades. Then all the parents say, oh, my kid has a 90 average, 100 average. They're, they're so proud of their kids. are proud Because they paid for their grades, like I always said. And now it's all over the newspaper. They can't believe it. Now they're shutting down private schools. They're investigating private schools. They're checking out private schools. And people are running away from the private schools because of the paper. Because the kids don't have the, whatever they don't have to, to, to study, whatever the hell it is. So the parents say, well, this kid has to pass high school. We've got to get him into college. So he will take a bunch of money. Give my kid an A. It's like um, back to school with Rodney Dangerfield. That's what it is. But, of course, nobody will admit to that. With all that said, that's not what I want to talk about because I want to read the articles in the paper that I've always said that. Here's what I want to say. When I'm with friends last night, I'm talking about college, university, all this other stuff. And the, the, I, I like the people who went out with last night very, very much. And one of the guys, and Andrew says, David doesn't believe in education because he's talking to the kids. All the kids are going to college and all that bullshit. I said, I never said that. I said, success is based on drive, ambition, and persistence. That's what I've always said. And if your kids go to college, and when they come out of college with a degree, if they don't have drive, ambition, and persistence, what good is a degree? Yeah, I mean, all the parents think they go to college, they get the best education, they go to Harvard, Yale, the best education, they have a piece of paper. I said, great. Now go buy a car. Say, I just graduated high school. I got honors. I'm in the scholarship. I got A's, and I'm on the top of the grade. Great. I like to buy this Mercedes. Terrific. How much are you going to put down? Put down. Here's my degree. Give me the Mercedes. That's what I keep trying to tell Andrea. I said, now, let him go buy a house. I like to buy a house. Great. How much are you going to put down? Put down what? Here's my degree. Because that's what the parents think it is. I said, but I know too many people that have huge degrees. I'm behind their smartest people. Living in shelters. They're broke. Their wives are supporting them because they have no drive, ambition, and persistence. So I keep telling Andrea, what good is going to college if the kid doesn't know what the hell he's going to do? Now, here's my question I want to do, and this is going to be lots of blogs and all this other stuff. So the people I was out with yesterday said, well, according to statistics, statistics show and prove that kids that go to college have a better chance of making more money. Lots of people tell me that. They make more money but based on statistics. Are you a statistic? That's all I want. What the hell do statistics mean? You know, I gamble in Las Vegas. And they have slot machines. These slot machines, 97% the statistics pays out 97%. For every dollar you put in, the machine lights up, 97% pay out. 97% pay out. That means if you put in a dollar, you get 97 cents back. Based on the statistics that over the millions and millions of spins, it'll average out paying you 97 cents for every dollar you put in. Based on the statistics. But when you're playing, it may not happen right exactly then. So based on the statistics, all these parents that say the statistics says if you go to college, you can get a degree and get an education, your, your chances are better it's based on statistics of getting a higher, better job. Great. But what if those kids, my friend's kids, aren't part of those statistics? Then what do you do? Well, the statistics say that for a higher percentage, just so happens not my kids, but a higher percentage. So what they're doing, they're gambling. They're gambling on their kids. And here's what I want to talk about. Would you do this? To send a kid to college, and I was talking to my the friends last night, they say it's about 20000 a year. All right, 20000 a year. So what you're doing is you're investing in your children. You're investing in your kids that hope when they go to college and they get a degree and they get an education, you're hoping they get a good job, that they make enough money, and they have a nice life, all that stuff. You're gambling. That's, that's what, it's all gambling because you're, you're bankrolling a human being. That's what you're hoping, and you're hoping that when he gets out, he's going to do something with his life, with his education. So here's my question to you. If you had $20,000 a year, $80,000 to send the kid to, uh, to four years of college, and the friend I was with last night says, oh, an undergraduate degree doesn't get you anything. Not anymore. An undergraduate degree doesn't get you anything. You have to get at least a master's degree. So there are two more years. 
So we talk about 20, 40, 60, 80, 120 thousand dollars for a kid to go to six years of school. Great. Now, if you had 120 thousand dollars, and I said to the people last night, this is what I would like to do. Whatever college my kid wants to go to, whatever it's going to cost, I like to take that money. Let's say it's 80 thousand dollars, and I want to put it in a bank. I want to put it in a bank in a five percent. You can get a guaranteed five percent CDs, whatever the hell they have here, guaranteed certificates, whatever else, and put. And I said, instead of me giving it to the college. So the dean of the college could buy a new wing, could buy a new statue, could buy library books to get a new building, and they'll put David Bronstein's building gave us $80,000. I said, send me, give me to the college, then my kid comes out broke, then he has to hope to get a job, I'm going to take the $80,000 and put in a certificate in the bank. Then let my kid get loans to go to college. Because when he goes to college, based on all the statistics, when you get out of college, you get a great job and you make more money based on the statistics. So when he gets that great job and he makes more money, he'll be able to pay off the loans because that's what it's all based on. And meanwhile, he'll have $80,000 in the bank. Then he can start off his career, and he can start his own business, and he can live on the interest. Instead of me giving the 80000 to the dean of the college so he can buy more books and have a nice park and put in more trees, and then my kid gets out of college, he ain't got nothing. But the college and the dean took his wife out to very nice dinners. They went on beautiful vacations. They bought pocketbooks and shoes. I'm going to give to my kid. And let my, my kid, when he gets out, based on the statistics, he'll have a great job and make more than enough money to pay off the loans. And God forbid if he doesn't, the 80000 is there to pay off the loans. That's my thinking. Now, Andrew said, you're out of your mind. Andrew says, there's you and then there's everybody else. So if there's everybody else, then there's you. But here's what I was saying yesterday. When they're all telling me, no, based on the statistics, they all live by statistics. How does anybody know? Where, where, I said, where did you read these statistics? How do you know these statistics are right? You can't read the paper. This food is the best thing for you. Everybody should eat this food. Based on the statistics. Then months, years ago, by this food's the worst thing. What are you doing eating this food? You shouldn't be taking this food. People are asking crazy. It's totally the statistics. So what I'm saying to you is, based on my conversation yesterday, and then I'll talk about the newspaper articles and all that stuff. If you were going to invest $120,000 in your kid's education, and that's six years, and that's what you're doing. You're investing in the kid. You're investing in the human being that the kid gets out and gets a great job. You're gambling based on the statistics. You're gambling. That's what's going to happen. But I know too many people that didn't happen. I know a lot of people that didn't graduate school and are billionaires because their success is based on drive, ambition, and persistence. That's what it's all about. Would you, if I said to you, I have a great deal for you. Give me $120,000, and I'm going to put it someplace for six years, and nothing's going to happen. <laughs> You're not going to get any interest. You're not going to make any money on it. I'm just going to put it over here for six years. Would you do that? Does that make sense to you? Because that's what you do when you give it to your kid to go to college. When you give it to the college, the 120000 is gone. You say, here, dean of college, go build another building, another tree, another park, another park bench. Take the $120,000. You're not going to get it back. And then I'm going to hope, I'm going to gamble, throw the dice if my kid gets out, and he makes more based on the statistics, that I'll have a great life, I'll buy a big house. You're gambling. Hopefully it'll happen. That's a big gamble. But in those six years, you just threw 120000 out the window, because God forbid it doesn't happen for your kid. It happens to some kids, other kids it doesn't. You read about in the paper about the economy, the economy, people that worked at Lehman Brothers, people that had private jets and homes in the Hamptons, are all broke now. They all went to college. The CEO of Yahoo was fired. Didn't the CEO of Yahoo go to Harvard, Yale? You figured the CEO of Yahoo, Yahoo I must have gone to college and became a CEO of Yahoo, a billion dollar company. Why would they get fired? They got fired because Yahoo's in the toilet. Google is making more money than Yahoo. But how could that happen? Because the CEO of Yahoo, you figure she's smart enough to make more money than Google or at least compete with Google or, or be in the same plane as Google. Maybe, I mean, there has to be a winner with two people, so one's a little bigger than the other one. But to be so low, they get fired? And then Rim, I read about the, the Blackberries. That they lost $3 billion. It's going under, under, under. How could that happen? The board of directors, you must think, have, have, must have had to go to college to get an education. The CEO of RIM, the, the big shots, the players, the technicians, everybody had to have an education more than high school. So how can they lose $3 billion? They have to be educated enough at college degrees to know they can make more money. Maybe they can't compete with the other companies with the pads and the phones, but they could be uh, you know, close to it. But the whole thing is going to the, every, all the shareholders are selling their stocks. Selling their, why? Their education had to do something there, for God's sakes. What I'm saying to you is, would you take 120000 or $80,000 that you throw in your kid's education and put it somewhere for four or six years where you're not going to see a dime of that ever? Not, no interest, nothing's going to accrue, nothing. That wouldn't matter. If I came to you with a business proposition, give me $80,000 for six years, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> would you say, great, here it is, because that's what you do when you give it to your kid to go to college. Nothing's going to happen in those four to six years, and then you're going to gamble that the kid is going to be a big hit. 
But God forbid, what if he isn't? Then what? But what if I said, why don't you take the $80,000 and $20,000, $120,000, whatever it is, you invest in your kid. Wouldn't you like to give it to your kid? Wouldn't you like to have your kid start out on a great plan in life, whatever the hell it is? So you put it aside in the bank and let it accrue interest. Then as in business, you use OPM, other people's money. You get loans, well, however you get loans from all these grants and things, you listen to that grant, and you use other people's money and gamble that way with the kid. Because you're gambling, the kid's going to be a hit. If he goes to college, because based on the statistics, he's going to be a big hit. Great. Then you're gambling. Because that kid better be a big hit, because somebody has to pay off those loans. And it's either going to be the kid with his big job, that all the money he's making, he's going to be one of those statistics that's a big hit. Because God forbid, if he doesn't make that big hit that you're gambling on, at least you got the 80000 you can pay off then. But what if he is the big hit? Great. He pays off the loans, and he still gets the eighty grand. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying to you. It's all a business decision. It, it, that's all it is, is business. You're taking that. Now, most people put money in their kids' education because they've got to keep up with the Joneses. That's, I don't want to admit to that. They have to have the best education, the best education. Great. Then they get out, nothing. <laughs> and it happens, I know too many people. It's too dumb. I have a friend that has two degrees. Like my friend last night said, yeah, you can't make it with an undergraduate. You need six years. I have a friend that has six years of college. He's living in a shelter. He's living in a shelter, this guy. No drive, no ambition, no persistence. Another friend is unbelievably smart, unbelievable. His wife supports him. Another guy was a lawyer, a lawyer. Stop uh, being law, doesn't want to practice law. Married a rich lady, doesn't want to do law. They have no drive, ambition, and persistence. They ain't got nothing. But when you get out of college, if you have drive, ambition, and persistence to use the piece of paper, to use the education that you have, then you can be a hit. But all these people, all Andrew's friends think, you get a piece of paper, based on statistics, you get a job, that's it.